the last book I read in January was The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Why do I keep, I keep wanting to say Wallflyer? Here we go, here we go. This book is about a girl called Evie who's just, wait, hold on. Overcome down my mouth this time is what's going in the video. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my January reading wrap up and reading goals update. And I'm a little bit late with this one considering it's like the 12th of February now, but I wanted to get this video done and uploaded anyway. Honestly, I've had a bit of a disappointing start to the year reading wise. Let me get into the books that I read last month. So the first book I finished in January was What Light by Jay Asher, the author who wrote 13 Reasons Why. I was in the mood for something Christmassy so I picked this up. I actually started it in December. I started this on Christmas Day actually but I finished it this year. It was just okay. I didn't love it but I didn't hate it. It was just kind of average for me. I know it's fiction and it's a Christmas book and like anything can happen type of thing but I did find it just a teeny bit alarming how easily Sierra accepted what happened between Caleb and his sister. I mean she showed some hesitation but not really. I know people change and it's not really conducive or even fair to hold their past over them but it just kind of felt like she was all in so quickly. It felt kind of insta-lovey. Oh I didn't even tell you, okay in case you don't know what this book is about basically this girl and her family run a, they have a Christmas tree farm in Oregon and then each year around Christmas time just after Thanksgiving they go to California. They have a tree lot there and they're selling and obviously they sell the trees and they've been doing that every year since e before she was even born it was a family business but um this year might be the last year that they go because business has been slowing down and her whole thing sierra's whole thing is that she doesn't want to date someone in california because then she just goes back to oregon for the rest of the year for long distance she's not really about that but then obviously she meets caleb and then romantic things ensue that's basically the background of the book. So next I read Simon vs the Homo Sapiens Agenda and considering how popular this book is on booktube I don't really think a plot summary is necessary but in case you are one of the few that has heard nothing about this book I'll give you a bit of a background. So this book is about a guy named Simon, he's 16, he's in high school, he's just your average guy but he has a secret and that is that he's gay, no one knows except another guy called Blue. Uh, that's not his real name, that's his pen name. And he's a guy that Simon's been communicating with via email. And essentially the book begins with Simon's emails being discovered by a guy at school who then uses those emails to blackmail Simon. So this book basically chronicles what happens after the blackmail begins. And I wanted to read this book for a few reasons. One, it was so hyped on booktube, everybody and their mother seemed to love it. And it's being adapted into a film coming out in March possibly April in the UK, I'm not actually too sure. The film is going to be called Love, Simon. So I feel like I'm in the minority when it comes to this book. I liked it, but I didn't love it. There was so much booktube hype surrounding this that I just had to read it. But then when I did, I was just kind of underwhelmed. It was good, don't get me wrong. It was cute and it was funny. I just, I really wanted to love it. And I, when I didn't, I was just kind of underwhelmed and a little bit saddened by it. I definitely don't hate it, that's for sure. But I don't think it's gonna have a lasting effect on me. I liked all the characters, even Marty. And I like Becky Albertalli's writing style. Simon, Leah, and the rest of them, all their friends, they felt like real teenagers. Sometimes the way teenagers are written in books doesn't feel authentic. But that is one thing I can say about the characters in this is that they did come across as real teenagers. I think it's fair to say that I'm more than likely to pick up one of her books in the future. I know Leah on the Offbeat is coming out this year and I haven't read The Upside of Unrequited yet. I'll probably give both of those books a read. I think my favourite part of the whole book was when they went to a gay bar. Simon was so funny in those scenes. I can't wait to see that in the movie. I feel like that's going to be a particularly funny part. I also really like the part where his parents are explaining to him why they're so interested in the changes in his life. I just thought that that was a really sweet moment. I also really liked how diverse this book was. It felt diverse in a way that wasn't forced. Like it wasn't like, let me meet some criteria by making this character black, this character gay. The way it was written as well made for a quick read, which is a plus. I enjoy books I can get through fairly quickly, but not feel like I'm rushing through them. One thing that's not even really a thing, but it's something that I picked up on, is how many times Simon was called Bub by his sister Alice in one scene. It's not like a critique, so to speak, but it's just something I noticed. She called him Bub four times across two pages and it felt a little bit OTT. Like, oh, what's wrong, Bub? Oh, is it Bub? Tell me, Bub. What's on your mind, Bub? It just felt like a lot of Bub. I, I don't know, I don't know. It's a small thing, but it's just something that I noticed. That's just me nitpicking, to be fair. So those are my thoughts. Dare I say it, but I do think 
that Simon versus the Homo sapiens agenda was a little bit overhyped. I've said it. That being said though, I'm really looking forward to the movie. I think Nick, what's his, what's his name? I've forgotten his name. Simon versus the Homo sapiens agenda was the second book I read in January. So the third book I read in January was Am I Normal Yet? by Holly Bourne. So this book is about a girl called Evie who's just started college after spending some time in a mental hospital. She has OCD and I think generalised anxiety disorder. So it's about her just trying to adjust to her college, making new friends, you know, going to parties and having fun and stuff and just trying to be normal. I did not enjoy this book really at all. I felt like it was longer than it needed to be. The language in it felt straight up cringy at times, like every word, not every word, but a lot of the words ended in Y. Let me try and give you some examples. Okay, here we go. I found an example of like the words that just end in Y unnecessarily. He smiled again, the cheekbones, the almighty cheekbones. His face looked like he'd been chiseled out of butter by the gods and yet he was all shy and looky downy. I wasn't a teenager a hundred years ago or anything and I feel like the way they talk hasn't changed that much. Naturally I can't speak for every teenager that's ever lived but the way they talk in this book really doesn't feel like it doesn't feel true to teenagers. Like how many teenagers do you know call someone a butt face when they're fuming? Like really? I just can't imagine a 21st century teenager calling someone a bum face. I can't imagine anyone outside of primary school calling anyone a bum face, you know what I mean? A lot can change in a few years, I know, but really. I might just be a bit too old for this book. I also did like how the flashbacks were inserted into the book. To me they interrupted the flow of the story, they weren't inserted seamlessly and they even felt a bit forced at times. Like something is happening and then Lexi is reminded of something else that happened and then she talks about it but the way she does it is kind of like like this just like for example when the worry outcome survey is first mentioned it's not really a spoiler but if you don't want to hear about this part just skip ahead to the time on the screen so Lexi gives her therapist her worry outcome survey for the week and then it flashes back to when she did her first one and the quote is I remembered the first time Sarah asked me to fill one out and then the flashback ensues in that particular moment and others I feel like it would have flowed better and just fit the story a bit more if the flashback had just happened rather than and this is when and then suddenly I remembered the first time this happened do you know what I mean the writing style I feel like just wasn't for me I feel if the flashbacks had just sort of happened without necessarily being introduced it would have flown a bit better and another thing honestly I really do think I'm just too old for this book because it was just a bit annoying everyone is always giggling in this book I mean not always giggling considering the subject matter but there's just so much giggling and the word that's used to describe it is giggling. I don't know if it's just me but I don't really associate giggling with teenagers. Like I'm not saying they're all dead inside and they don't laugh or show any emotions or anything but why are they always giggling? And at one point in the book Evie refers to Guy who is a guy called Guy. She um, she refers to him as Ignory Norrington. It felt really juvenile. The language in the book at times felt like it was the language of kids in like year six so 10 11 years old this book deals with really heavy subject matter but it feels like it's written for preteens, and that's not a bad thing but it's marketed as a ya book like so those two things don't really match up for me i didn't really enjoy reading it and i just wanted to get it finished i felt like it was way longer than it needed to be it's over 400 pages it's the first book in a trilogy and i don't think i'm gonna pick up the last two because this one just wasn't a good read for me and another thing the list apparently just keeps on giving it spoiled Thelma and Louise for me. I mean, I kind of had an inkling as to how that film ended, but it spoiled it for me with like no warning and that, that annoyed me. That rubbed me up the wrong way. I don't know if I could say this was necessarily overhyped because I hadn't heard a lot about it, but it had really positive reviews on Goodreads. Another disappointing read. So this next one might be just a smidge controversial because this book I feel like is loved by so many people, uh, my sister being one of them. The last book I read in January was The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. You guys, I feel like this book hurt me the most in that it was a book I've wanted to read for such a long time and I just never got around to it for one reason or another and I finally picked it up last month and I was just so disappointed. It just wasn't what I expected it to be. Towards the end, I just wanted to get it finished. I wasn't really enjoying it and I just wanted to be done. This book mentions some heavy stuff, suicide, rape, 
abortion like just to name a few they're all mentioned but not really addressed properly and i know they're not necessarily the focal point of the story but there were so many topics that were just kind of thrown up and then we just moved on the book is relatively short it's um 231 pages and a lot of heavy topics are mentioned including the ones i brought up earlier and then some and i think it's definitely fair to say that too many topics are raised to be properly addressed in 231 pages i felt like the book needed to be at least 300 pages or less topics needed to be included in it i actually watched a movie this month and i liked it way more than the book to me it felt like the book was more of a work in progress whereas the film felt more complete i really liked the way logan mervin played charlie and ezra miller as patrick was just perfect emma watson's american accent wasn't great but she's a good actress so you can you can overlook it for me the film is definitely something that i'd rewatch, whereas the book i'd be a little bit more hesitant to reread i don't really have much else to say i just wasn't really a fan definitely another unpopular opinion but the perks of being a wallflower just wasn't what i expected it to be but that's the end of my reading wrap up and i just want to give you guys a quick update on my reading goals for the year so far i haven't really made a big bend in my goals for the year one of my goals was to read more of my own books rather than library books and three out of the four books i read last month were actually library books the perks of being a wallflower was mine so not doing so great there but it is only the beginning of the year it's only february 12th i'm definitely hoping to to get to a few more of my own books in the coming months. That is essentially the update. Currently I'm reading Sleepers by Lorenzo Carcaterra. Uh, Sleepers, I've already seen the film. Usually it's the reverse, I always read the film before watching the movie, but at the time I didn't know that Sleepers was based on a book. And let me just say this now, Sleepers is one of the best movies I've ever seen and the book is shaping up to be one of the best books I've ever read. So hopefully February is looking like a bit of a better reading month than January was. As of right now, I am two books behind on my reading goal of reading 52 books this year but I'm not too concerned at this point. I've nearly finished Sleepers so I'm definitely on track to getting back on track. That is the end of this week's video. Thank you for watching. It feels a bit weird doing these reading videos but hopefully I'll get into the swing of things fairly soon. If you enjoyed this video and you want to check out some more of my videos go ahead and do that. There'll be buttons on the screen you know somewhere in this vicinity and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel there'll also be a button on the screen for you to do so. If you want to check out some more reading related videos, so far I've done two. I did a video on the books that I read last year, I read 47, that should be on the screen or in the description box. And I also did a video about my reading goals for 2018. So if either of those are something that you're interested in, go ahead and check them out. There's also beauty videos, try on hauls and reviews on my channel. So if any of those things sound like something you'd be interested in, check those out as well. But that's everything for this week's video. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye! Oh, I feel like we're getting better at those outros. I'm gonna launch myself out of the window. The last book I read in January of 2017, not even close. <sighs> oh, does anyone else find it kind of hard to breathe whilst drinking at the same time? Was The Perks of Being a Wallflyer. What's a flyer? Well, actually, a wallflyer would be a poster. Anyway.